Hello, I'm FKX Cat, and I've been playing survival Minecraft in the same world for six and a half years now. And because I've documented much of that process via my Let's Play series and of course my live streams, I've seen a lot of comments from a lot of different people uh, all describing different things they like or hate about how I play Minecraft, with the one common denominator though being that people hate how I manage my inventory. Everyone seems to disagree with the fact that my inventory management skills are pretty uh, bad to say the least. And uh, yeah, you can see how looking at my inventory, I'm just a Minecraft hoarder. I keep things that I really don't need right now, like 80 free paper or seven sweet berries because I'm totally gonna get around to using them soon. I need to remind myself by keeping them here. I don't even put drops away all the time. I just have a messy inventory is what I'm trying to say here. And because of that, people don't like this fact. And although I could fix my uh, you know habits, I could learn better skills of this, I feel like rather we could use this as a good opportunity to learn how to maximize our inventory space in Minecraft. Like a true hoarder, we're gonna ignore our problem and instead we'll just make more and more space to make the problem worse and worse and worse. And in the process, hopefully you learn a thing or two about how to maximize your inventory space. Because by default, you have 27 slots here, plus nine uh, over here, plus the one uh, you know offhand slot, giving you 37 inventory slots. But today, we're gonna be increasing that significantly because the first thing you can do to increase your inventory slots is to add an ender chest to the mix. If you have an ender chest and a silk touch pickaxe, you can have an extra 27 slots, which are accessible at any point in time, anywhere in the world. You have to go for a few seconds to break it and pick it up. But basically, yeah, in two seconds, we can have ourselves some chain leggings, some diamonds and stuff. But as you can see, that's not enough for us. Having 27 more slots, you know, a total of 64, that sounds pretty good, but I mean, it's still not enough for us. So what are we gonna do to increase it even further? Well, that's where this handy Minecraft feature comes in because there is the shulker box, which has existed since 1.11, and this allows you to store another 30 blocks. And unlike the ender chest, which is the same anywhere in the world, so here's another ender chest, we place it down, it's the exact same stuff. Uh, this shulker box is unique to the shulker box that you physically have. If you have this shulker box in your inventory, then no one else has access to it. But basically, you can have the shulker box stored inside your inventory. You know, you can put it right here and you can keep that alongside other stuff. And this means, unlike the ender chest, which you can only have one off, the shulker boxes can be kind of uh, looped as many times as you want. So even though we have a shulker box right now, we can go ahead and craft ourselves another one, which you better believe we're gonna do. So if you're curious as to how to do this, you make a chest and then you take that chest and you make a shulker box. You can then decide to dye this one, like my blue one I have right there. But yeah, now we have access to a second set of loot because we have a second shulker box and we've taken our inventory space, which was, you know, 64 of the ender chest. We've added another 27 of the blue shulker box. And now we've got this shulker box, which adds another 27 slots, as you can see right there. Uh, the one limitation to this is you can't put shulker boxes inside shulker boxes, but you can actually put shulker boxes inside chests. You can also, if you want, put shulker boxes inside ender chests, which is kind of fun. So yeah, now we have access to even more items in our inventory, or we can put them in the ender chest, which we'll do for now. And we can show how like, oh yeah, look at that. We've got way more storage in here because the ender chest has its own items in, as well as having the items in the shulker box. Admittedly, that means to get these items, you have to place down your ender chest, then you have to grab out the shulker box, place that down and open that. But still, the price you have to pay to have more inventory slots is not as high as the number of inventory slots that you actually do get. So we've got roughly a hundred slots in our inventory now. That's really good. But what if we want more? And you can probably guess where this next bit's gonna go because we've only used two shulker boxes, right? And even though they're late game content, there's gotta be a way to get more. Those shulker shells can't be too hard to come by. So this is my chest full of things that I've taken from the end. If you don't know, once you beat the ender dragon, she opens a portal to get to the end cities and the end gateways. There's a lot of other stuff out there. It allows you to get a lot of diamond armor. It's really great, uh, diamond equipment, etc. cetera. Uh, but you can also have access to things like shulker shells because every shulk you Kip Kilt has a small chance of dropping their shell. These shulker shells, when you get two of them together, allows you to make a shulker box, which is really cool, because then obviously we can combine these together with some chests, which you better believe we're about to do, and we can make ourselves a lot of shulker boxes. But this right here, as you can see, is us making shulker boxes from our shulker shells, which now means we have six more of those to add to the inventory. Um, but the question is, is like, okay, so if you can have six shulker boxes plus the two you've got over there, how many shulker boxes can you have total? And the simple answer this one, is there is an infinite number of shulker shells theoretically gettable, but they're very hard to obtain in survival. The thing I really like about shulker shells is they are some super late game content because to get them, you need to find an end city, which is quite rare and requires you to, you know, explore this dimension, which was previously kind of, uh, you know, useless. So it's really cool that the shulker box exists. It's really cool the shulker shells exist. And uh, basically as a result of this, I want to fix this hoarding problem as much as I humanly can, or I guess the opposite of fix, feed into it. I want to feed into this hoarding problem as much as I humanly can and the way I'm gonna do that is by going to the end, taking a bunch of Neverack, uh, you know, we have lots of shulker boxes with it now, and we're gonna be bridging out from there to find as many shulker shells as we can. Just like this, 4,000 blocks later, we found our first brand new 
end city or end structure, you, whichever way you want to call them, because arguably if they don't have the ships, they're a different thing. But we found ourselves a structure which is going to contain some shulkers, and again, we have lots of those uh, potential shulkers. Even though we have uh, looting on our sword, the best enchantment we can have for finding uh, loot from these guys, uh, realistically what this comes down to is a 50-50 chance of when we kill the shulker, will it drop a shulker shell? We got really lucky in that both of these guys did, and now we need to do this, uh, go through the entire place, find as many shulkers as we can, Oh, and it looks like we're quite lucky because in here there is a, uh, oh god, <laughs> maybe not so lucky. But it seems like we've got one of these rooms which has about seven separate shulkers, which gives us a lot more, a lot more chances for those shulker boxes, which we're going to need a lot of. Also, there's some chests here so we can get some free diamonds as we go along, but that's not our key focus. Our key focus is these guys, so let's kill them one by one. You know, I'll be honest, I didn't think I'd be in a video saying that I didn't like being knocked up by a Minecraft mob, but here we are regardless. So we've killed all the shulkers in the room and in the entire end city, and we found ourselves six shulker shells. This means we can make three more shulker boxes, but if we want to live our dream of having maximum inventory space, we need more than just three more boxes. We're going to need a lot more than that. Oh, there's actually a few more that we've uh, left around here. Let's check around all of this, I guess, just to make sure we've got the shulker shells. But basically, we're going to get roughly three, maybe four or five uh, shulker boxes per you know entity we take out which means we're gonna be here for quite some time we're gonna have to find several of these but it's worth it to feed my hoarding addiction and in case you're wondering if this is really the most efficient way to you know get these shulker boxes or the shulker shells at the very least and the answer is actually yes shulkers are actually a non-renewable mob there's no way to breed them there's no way to do anything like that they spawn once naturally with the world and then that's it and you might be thinking oh so there's a limited supply of shulkers and technically the answer is yes they're non-renewable so they will run out eventually, you know, it's like uh, insert non renewable resource on earth right here. But despite the fact that they're limited, at the same time, you can still get as many as you'd ever want because we're 4,000 blocks out right now and we have several shulker boxes. Uh, if we went 4 million blocks out, we'd still find new end cities and we'd have a thousand times as many. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, shulker boxes. Okay, we're now at nine shulker shells. Again, four and a half boxes, but we need to get as many as we need to fill in inventory. So minus the you know five or so we already have. That means we need 36 slots, 72 shulker shells. Again, take away the five. We need 62 of those. So we're going to be doing this for quite some time. So we very well might need to find as many as 20 or 30 of these end cities if they turn out to all be as disappointing as the two we found so far. I hope it doesn't end up that way, but let's keep looking until the dream happens. But I guess we're in for a long ride, so come join me as I get attacked by Enderman and try and find end cities. So I finally made it over the endless abyss that had just a few islands in the way, and I've been rewarded quite well because we have an end city and a proper one with all the separate rooms and stuff. This might be worth as many as five or six or maybe even more uh, shocker shells, so let's go raid it. I've been trapped flying in this corner now for over a minute. Like, if you just get bad luck or, like, yeah. <laughs> Staying too close to shulkers can be bad is my point now. So, yeah, we found 19 of these shulk shells just in this one, uh, you know, end city. And that just goes to show that all you need to do is find three of these. And that's pretty much an inventory full right there. So now I'm on top of the ship, and I'm always reminded when I get here just how weird an idea of a structure that is. Like, what if there were floating cities in the end with floating ships next to them? Yeah, sure, why not, I guess. Okay, so we've reached just about the peak of as far out as we're going to go today. You can see how we're about 4,000 blocks negative on the Z and about 3,000 negative on the X, about 7,000 blocks away. The reason I don't recommend going too much further than this, even unless you need like more than 100, is because, uh, you know, no if you're going in a straight line, there's always going to be some stuff you missed along the way. So after you've gone a fair number of blocks in one uh, direction, then come back in the other one, kind of make a square pattern, if that makes sense. Just like this, a few thousand blocks of Nevrak and 31 shulker shells later, we've actually run out and we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. So from here, if you want to, you can just kind of run around on foot. And you know, that's entirely fine. It makes it less reusable if you want to walk along the same path. And you know, I kind of do, so that's a problem. But since we're just trying to like get some scraps, although actually we're trying to get another 30, but if we just find one amazing end city around here, it will be worth it. So we'll run around on foot for a bit, or you can fly, or you can max out your ender distance if you're on PC and you can turn all the way up to like 80 and you can try and find some other end cities. Well, I'm going to be honest with you, I think that was the most wasteful 10 minutes of my life. I found nothing, no peek at anything, not even any end gateways like portals back to the mainland. It looks like, yeah, we're just going to keep going until we find, oh wait, is that an end city? Nope, it's some chorus plants. There's a lot of chorus plants in the end, as it turns out. So yeah, the walk back home is making me realize just how rare end cities really are. Like, I guess we got really good luck today for finding four 
in the space of an hour of uh, bridging. So already you can see how with my lowly 17 shulker boxes, that means my inventory space has been increased to this much. And uh, yeah, I'm starting to feel like we have enough space for most things we need. Uh, you know, uh, for most people, I think 10 shulker boxes would probably be enough, especially 17. But you know, we're trying to take things to the max. So we're going to try until we have an entire inventory's worth so we can truly max out our inventory. Because honestly, having over 500 separate slots or, you know, over 30,000 items is already kind of impressive, right? Like that's, that's nice. But uh, again, I, I feel like a thousand slots is, is the real magic number where you can really start to just like have everything you want ever on you at all times. So that's where we're going. Let's go back to the end and let's do this again. So this will probably seem like a ridiculous idea, but that's half the fun in doing it in my opinion. So I have a corner of the world where I breed horses. Let's take one of my better horses. It has a pretty good jump. It has a uh, really good speed. Uh, let's take one of these horses and let's uh, see if this helps us in our search for those end cities. So my first problem is even getting the horse into the nether portal to get it to the end because I don't think I can make this jump. <laughs> I thought correctly. <laughs> Okay, so here's the scoop. I'm in the nether now, and my nether portal to get to the end is over there. There's no other way to get there because there's loads of tiny passageways built for a person. So I might just have to fall off the edge here or make a big jump. I feel like, oh, go, 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 go! I'm sorry, Mr. Horse. I'm sorry. Horse tried to swim in lava. <laughs> that was such a good horse to just waste. So the other horse I have available that's pretty fast and therefore useful for the job really cannot jump. Like, this can jump like two blocks. So I guess that'll stop me from trying some ridiculous jumps and failing by mistake. Can I can I just point out how absurd this is? Like, everything about what's happening here. So yeah, we have to make sure the horse goes in first, which is very tricky to do, but we'll try our best. And then we have to go in after it. That was a lot of effort to do very little. So I've never been quite so nervous to just like walk in a straight line for so long. Because the horse is a pretty wide hitbox, like you can go quite far to the left or right. I shouldn't test it, but like you can go quite far right or left and the horse is fine. But uh, yeah, it's still kind of nervous. Just walk in in a straight direction for a very long time. And just like this, we found our first end city. Or at least I hope we have. It might be one we've already found. I'm not too sure. Oh, I think two sets of shulkers spawned in the same area. Look, I got two shulker shells from killing them, but the shulkers didn't die. I think there's multiple shulkers in the same space and they attacked each other maybe? That's my best theory I've got. Maybe they've all glitched like this, because you can see the animations are doubling up everywhere around it. Yeah, every single one of these shulker shells, it must have happened in the transfer from Bedrock to Xbox One, maybe. But every single one of these seems to have doubled up. So assuming this uh, bug or glitch, or whatever you want to call it, like this error in drop rates uh, does stay true, then we've got the mother load of all end cities to test it on. It's an end city with an end ship, with everything we need, all the shulkers, hopefully. Oh, there are so many shulkers. If we can get like three to four shulker shells per drop, then we are in for a treat. So a question I've never had to ask before is what exactly happens when you put the horse in the end portal to take him back to the overworld? Does he, does he go to your spawn or does he have his own spawn to go to? Let's find out, I guess. Well, he definitely didn't go to my spawn. <laughs> so there's a lost horse somewhere in the overworld right now. So I guess rip second horse, he was just as loved as the first one. But we do have other things we need to get to. So let's go ahead, let's craft ourselves some chests. Oh no, did you just see in chat, horse suffocated in a wall? What? The horse actually did die. Okay, for real now, rip second horse. All I want to know is where it died so I can at least get the saddle back. I mean, I want to bury its remains or whatever you say about things you care about. If you don't know, this is my spawn area and... This is where, like, my default spawn, people who join the world. But I don't see any reference to any horse having been here. We're going to craft so many shulker boxes, just like this. And with all the ones I've found around my world, and all the ones I've crafted, we already have more than an inventory full. This is one inventory full. And then we have down here a hot bar full as well. Well, now we have a hot bar full. Which means we now have enough shulker boxes to have the maxed out inventory space you can have in the game. And then we've got four more, just for good measure. 
So now we can finally live the shulker box dream, the maximum inventory space dream, the dream of any hoarder who just doesn't have enough inventory space, because we now have 35 shulker boxes in my inventory. As you can see, you can count them if you'd like to. Uh, we could have 36, but I choose to keep a pickaxe with me because then we can place one very immediately, you know, break it and get it back. So yeah, 35 plus a pickaxe. You can theoretically use your fist to break these, but it's just not very fun. So the, the actual practical max you can have is 945 inventory inventory slots. Every single one of these shulker boxes can store 27 items, and I've got 35 of them. For 945 slots, that means I could store 945 diamond swords, or 945 diamond chest plates, or, you know, things like that that don't stack. But if we store things that do stack, then we can store 60 plus thousand separate items. In fact, the exact number will be on screen right now. It's 60,480, uh, st you know, I items, like uh, 60,480, glass blocks, 60,480, uh, you know, oak blocks, etc. This means that my 55,000 glass block end project could be done like this, and I'd still have shulker boxes to spare for the food, for the, you know, the equipment, for everything else. And to me, that's absolutely wild. The amount of storage space this offers for any build, like, it's, it's more than you'll ever need at any one time. And here's the crazy bit. We're not done with today's video. You might think, oh, good job, Toy Cat, you maxed out your inventory space. That was real nice. But again, you know, in these videos, I try to take things a bit further if we can and this is entirely impractical but let's do it anyway because do you remember how I lost two horses today I hope you do that was a very important part of the video the loss and the journey that came from uh, that uh, well we need to replace them right so let's get ourselves some new horses but what if instead I replaced it with a donkey? By the way, it's taken me a full hour to find this donkey. I've searched my entire world to find them. It's tricky to find a donkey because only 10% of horses spawn as them. However, there is a real nice benefit to having donkeys. Because you can actually put a chest on the side of your donkey, and that means you can have uh, 15 separate storage spaces, which guess what that means? You guessed it. We can now load up even more inventory space because we can load the donkey with these shulker boxes and carry around an additional 15 inventory spaces. If we want, we can also take this a step further and breed our donkey with our horse. And just like this, we have a mule, which you can feed with golden carrots to get up to full health. I really don't recommend it, but you can. So now we can take this next level storage even further because we can load up our mule with our storage as well. And yeah, that's right. We now have an additional 30 slots and we can use both at the same time, by the way. We can ride the donkey around and have the mule on the leash or vice versa. Or we could have two mules. We can breed as many of these as we like. The point being here is we now have... Also, look, the chest wobbles. That's a fun bedrock feature. But like, yeah, we, we now have officially a way to store 30 additional inventory slots in addition to the 27 extra you can have with your ender chest. So that's 57 slots of 64. Which means that just between these two animals, we can have way more, but just between two animals and your ender chest, you can have another 100,000 or 98,496. You know, because it's 27 by 57 by 64. But, you know, 98,496 extra blocks in addition to what you can have in your inventory. And although practically, I probably won't use two animals. I think I'll realistically stick to just using the mule everywhere. Because again, it's, it's probably a pretty good mule. In fact, let's, let's give it a real test. But the mule is probably the animal I'll be using for most of my practical time. Because, again, it's a bit faster than a donkey. It's almost a horse speed because we bred it with a fast horse. Um, but yeah, we have a way to transport an additional 15 shulker boxes around the place, which means that I don't really have many excuses for having a messy inventory anymore. This video was the opportunity for me to remove my excuses, but then also entirely just clutter it out for anyway, because now we have so much inventory space. What does it matter if I store 15 hay bales in my inventory at all times? Because I can store 15 of everything in my inventory because that's how much space I now have. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed today's little project video. I have a lot of shulker boxes and although realistically, you know, this video is kind of showing like we can have so many slots, you know, 150,000 at once basically. Uh, plus, we could we could go on infinitely with donkeys. You could have 50 donkeys on a lead and you could, uh, you know, take almost a million uh, inventory slots. But this video, even though it was mostly about that sort of showing you how crazy it can be, even just on the abstract, having this many... Uh, different uh, shulker boxes is so useful because having shulker boxes to store lots of one item means that you make less return trips. It means you have to fly less. It means you have to travel less. And then by using a lot of shulker boxes, again, even just a couple of them at once, but by taking a lot, you never have to do more than one journey. And it's a really cool late game feature that you should definitely check out, especially right now because apparently it's glitched. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you did all enjoy it because I'm going to see you all in the next one. Goodbye.